Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Zach UX and in today's episode I'm going to be covering some initial tips and tricks that you could use to break into UX and product design. Stay tuned. Okay, so let's dive right into today's topic, which is getting started in UX slash product design, specifically digital product design. And there's a lot of articles and videos and content out there kind of relating, relating to getting started in the field of user experience design. So I don't want to kind of re repeat you know, some of the things that's, that, you know, that's already out there. Uh, there will probably be some overlap though, uh, but I want to maybe cover some things that aren't always discussed in, in these videos and this content that's out there. Maybe some of the articles you've uh, read already. I think, you know, there's a lot of good game quality content out there, but I just want to maybe offer some different things to consider or some different points of view. The first thing I want to cover uh, when it comes to learning how to get into UX design is reading, like capital letters, read, I cannot express that enough, and not just articles you might find on Medium or other uh, blogs, things of that nature, but there's so many great books related to user experience, product design, and even really important books that aren't maybe necessarily straight connected to user experience design that you should consider reading because it'll actually inform your uh, business experience or expertise. It'll inform other areas uh, of like knowledge sets or, or that surround user experience design. So when you actually start working in the field, you, you'll have like a diverse array of uh, knowledge points that you might find from books that aren't like just straight UX design books. I'm going to leave uh, some of my most influential books that I've read over the last few years uh, in the you know comments section b below the video, and I've talked about some you know some of these books in the past. I can't stress enough reading is big. The second area I want to cover in kind of ways to get into UX design is again maybe not so obvious, not covered as much, but really developing your soft skills. Again, there's a lot of content out there that's going to cover hard skills. You can find it on Instagram. Uh, you can find it on Behance Dribble. Uh, there's a great course by uh, Main2 uh, Design and Code that you can kind of really you know learn to develop your hard skills. So that's maybe some coding if you're interested in that. Uh, you know, visual design, learning how to use Sketch or Figma, XD, so important tools. And I'm not saying these are tools that you shouldn't learn. Hard skills are important, but I want to cover some of the soft skills and the skills that have really benefited me the most as uh, I've grown in my career. Uh, the first one being kind of facilitation, facilitation of workshops. I definitely cover this time and time again, uh, but really connecting with people. That's what I mean. Like just kind of uh, bringing people together having them work together, work with you, work with other people, just being able to handle yourself well in a room of really smart, talented people and connecting with them is just a very, very important soft skill that doesn't get mentioned enough in my opinion. Uh, so that's one soft skill. Uh, I've talked about another one before, which is just asking a ton of questions, becoming a questionologist and kind of transferring that into, you know, insights through deep listening. You know, so just, you know, asking why questions, getting past maybe some initial explanations from users, from stakeholders, you know, through questions and through learning from those questions. Uh, super important, super valuable to become a UX designer. And if you compare some of these soft skills that I'm talking about with the hard skills that you need to learn, that's just going to level up your career in a way that you know might not be, happen if you're just kind of focusing on learning how to get better at the software, or learning how to code, or you know some of the stuff that you would do maybe on screen versus off screen. So just something I just want to you know kind of keep in mind, or want you to keep in mind when I mention soft skills. UX design is a lot more than what you're able to do on a computer. From my experience, is what you're able to do off screen in meetings, conversations relationships with people that kind of is a great way to get you to level up 
in your career. So another big area to consider when you're trying to kind of break into your career, and this is gonna be a little bit maybe of like a controversial topic, which is volunteering. And what I mean, and the reason why it's controversial is that I've seen a lot of designers uh, or you know, upcoming designers, or emerging designers, you know, post uh, work that's kind of redesigning Facebook or Google or Uber or whatever, like a big Silicon Valley company, and not considering any of the business practices. I posted a great article about this on Facebook. I'm gonna share uh, uh, you know this article in the YouTube uh, notes as well. But it was just kind of made me think about it. I see all these designers, you know, working on fake projects for you know Silicon Valley companies where there's actually so many great nonprofits or small startups that could use that effort and energy to build amazing work you know we've had, we at Toy have had the amazing opportunity to work with great impact companies and and nonprofits and you know and it's been great to work with the nonprofits that have been in a position to work with us but there's honestly a lot of great companies that aren't in a position to work with user experience agencies and would love to work with a young emerging designer uh, to solve some of their problems and like maybe even get their business started so look to volunteer uh, you know for nonprofits even for smaller startups yeah you know I know there's this big thing about working for free you don't want to work for free and I don't want you you to get taken advantage of either so be careful you know don't overwork yourself don't do a bunch of work for free but at the same time if you're already doing you know fake design projects why not take some of that effort and energy and for to benefit a cause or a company that you care about so that's just something to think about. So think, think about volunteering uh, strategically. Again, don't overwork yourself, don't work for free, don't get taken advantage of. This next tip is a little bit more obvious, but exposure, right? You see a lot of people posting on Dribbble, Behance, Instagram, social media, you name it. Exposure, get your work out there. Uh, this is where all the hard skills that I was kind of poo-pooing, but not really poo-pooing, comes back. You show off your hard skills. Show off what you've been doing on Sketch, uh, Figma, XD, whatever you're using. If you have some coding skills, show that off. It's totally okay. But I would recommend just show some of the thinking, show some of the rationale. Are you, are you trying to solve some problems? Don't just show pretty work. I love looking at stuff on Instagram and Dribbble and Behance and I've been a part of that process and I still will be. And I just always look at it as art though. It's beautiful work and I'm not saying it's bad and I, but I don't see like, hey, that's great user experience design. I just see it as like really beautiful artwork. Uh, so my point is if you want to kind of get away from just kind of coming off as like pretty like UI visuals. Show that, show the pretty UI visuals, but show some thinking, show some rationale, show some UX process with it as well. And that again will trigger something for some potential employers and say, hey, this person's making great visual work, but is also showing some really strong rationale and thinking. And those are typically the kind of people that uh, are getting hired. I know when I'm looking at someone to work with, I'm looking for the thinking and not just the visual work. So when you're when you're looking to uh, get some exposure for your work, show off this as much as you're showing off your hard skill visual work. So on the note of kind of showing off your thinking and exposure and like and getting your work out there, don't just show visual work. Don't be afraid to write and speak. Uh, on your UX process, what you're learning about UX design, even if you're just starting, get get a Medium article out there. Showcase your uh, you know your experiences. Gary V, you know if you know Gary V, he talks about documenting and not uh, creating when it comes to content. And that resonates with me because I think there's a lot of opportunity even for younger designers to document your experience. What are you learning? Show off your thinking, you know, so um, don't be afraid if you're just starting off uh, to kind of post some uh, medium articles or blog posts or, uh, you know, speak on a panel, whatever. It's okay to kind of speak about your UX design process, what you're learning with UX, because again, I want to know how you're thinking and what you're thinking. So even if you are maybe thinking some things that show off your inexperience or whatever, I think that's okay. Because I still think there's potential, you're showing potential that you're ready to learn more. So I think it's okay to 
show some humility and be humble when you're writing and talking about UX design if you're just starting off, but still do it. Show it off, be humble, do your thing. You're gonna get the experience. You're gonna be able to write about it and talk about it, which is UX design more and more as you kind of go through your design process and go through projects. It's always gonna evolve. I'm always tinkering with what I write about and what I record here, uh, you know, with my YouTube channel. That, and it's okay to kind of go through that process and then show and document your journey as a UX designer. So again, with the, if you have a healthy balance of showing off your hard design skills with your thinking through articles, through videos like this, through if you're able to get an opportunity to speak somewhere, that's great for your resume. You know, I've seen a lot of uh, portfolios uh, or, or uh, you know, res literal physical resumes or digital resumes that show like, hey, if you wanna know more about what I'm talking about, or if you want to know about my thinking, I wrote this article, or I wrote that article, or I spoke here, or I did, uh, or I said something at my school, whatever. Show that off. It'll be a you know, huge uh, benefit for your kind of um, overall package for a potential employer. So that's it. So just to sum up, uh, great tips to get started in UX design. First one is read, 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 read. Not just articles, but great books. I'll create a list uh, in the comments below. Uh, soft skills, huge. Work on your hard skills, sure, important. But facilitate, be able to connect with people, ask questions, listen. I've covered all these things before. Super important, it's gonna just buoy your design career. A volunteer, don't be afraid to volunteer at events. Um, do great work for great people, even if it's for free, but do it strategically. On that note, make sure you're putting your work out there. Exposure is important. Get your work out there. Hard skills, soft skills, whatever you can do to showcase your work. On that note, document your experience, write about your experience, get those medium articles out there, get those blog posts out there, make a YouTube channel like this, do what you gotta do, get yourself out there. So that's all I got for today. Those are some of the things that I've done to kind of get started on my UX journey. And as I continue to learn and fail and succeed and grow and everything in between, I'll share um, what I'm experiencing with y'all. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate the support and I'm looking forward to continuing to grow the channel. Uh, on that note, if you can like and share, uh, that'll definitely help me out and keep things going. Uh, other than that, stay tuned for the next episode. See ya.